Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Swarna Mams Biology. So in this video, let us learn some of the important characters of the kingdom fungi. So let us start. So when we are discussing about fungi, we know fungi show some of the characters of the plants and some of the characters of the animals. So fungi is given a separate kingdom. Okay. So it is kingdom fungi. So when we see some of the important characters of fungi, so they are heterotrophic organisms, means they depend on the other organisms for their food. They can't prepare their own food materials by the photosynthesis. And they show great diversity in the morphology and habits. Okay. And they are cosmopolitan in distribution. That means they are present everywhere. And they prefer to grow only in the warm places and the humid places. So these are some of the most important characters of fungi. So we will be coming across this fungal growth in our day-to-day -day life. When you see the bread, when you keep the bread outside, without storage so you will be seeing the black layer on the top of the blood slices which is nothing but the growth of fungus and even when you keep some of the fruits like oranges etc without storing them in the fridge okay you will be uh, seeing small dot like structures which are called as orange rods so this is the growth of the fungus and even the mushrooms toadstools all belong to the kingdom fungi and some fungi are parasitic in nature where they depend on the other plants or the animals for their food. Examples of them are the white spots which grow on the top of the wheat plant, which depend on the wheat plant for its food and shelter. And even on some of the leaves, you will be uh, seeing the yellow colored or brown colored dots, which are nothing but fungal infections. So these are the examples of parasitic fungi. So when you see uh, some of the fungus, they are useful for the preparation of some of the materials. For example, yeast is useful for the baking of the bread and even in the preparation of the beer or wine. And some fungus like penicillium, if you see, it is useful for the preparation of antibiotics. And if you see the structure of fungi, they contain the structures which are called as hyphae and uh, these structures which are root like we call it as mycelium when you see the mycelium so mycelium is divided into different cells means uh, they are uh, separate when the single uh, mycelium is divided into different septa means each cell contain one nucleus then we call it as mycelium is septate in some cases mycelium doesn't contain any septa where a single cell is present which contains means the cytoplasm of a single uh, mycelium contains so many nuclei then we call such a condition as non septate or xenocytic it is called as non septate or xenocytic when you see the fungi, they are heterotrophic in nature and they absorb the organic matter or some of the substances from the dead um, dead organisms. So we call them as saprophytes. Okay, And in some cases, the fungi depend on the other organisms like plants or animals for their food. We call such fungi as parasites. And in some cases, they live in symbiotic relationship with uh, some other organisms. If association is with algae, we call it as lichen. Means they exchange the material. There will be the exchange of material between the fungus as well as the other organism. Means they are in mutual understanding. If you give one, it will, uh, the other organism will also provide the other which is necessary for uh, the fungal growth. Means they are in association with some other organism. If that association is in with the algae, we call them as lichens. And in some cases, the fungi are in association with the higher plants. Then we call it as mycorrhiza. Okay. They are called as mycorrhiza. When you see the reproduction in the clays of fungi, they, it shows both the asexual as well as sexual reproduction. So when you see asexual reproduction, it is mainly by the formation of conidia or it may be by the sporangiophores and geospores. Whereas in the case of uh, sexual reproduction, it is by oospores, ascos, um, ascospores as well as basidiospores. And in the case of uh, asexual reproduction, sometimes fungi also shows fermentation as well as fission, as well as budding. So all these are the asexual reproductive methods, that is formation of the different types of the spores 
and fission that is a binary fission or multiple fission or budding or fragmentation are the types of the asexual reproduction in the case of fungi, whereas sexual reproduction is by formation of spores, that is oospores, ascospores, as well as basidiospores. And if you see the sexual reproduction, first, the uh, fusion of the protoplasm occurs, then there will be fusion of the nucleate. So the fusion of the protoplasm, we call it as plasmogamy, will be followed by the fusion of nuclei, we call it as karyogamy. And after the fusion of nuclei, there will be a meiosis where the meiosis in the zygote, which will be resulting in the formation of what is called as haploid spores. So first, the protoplasm, the mycelium will be fusing to form what is called as plasmogamy. And plasmogamy will be followed by the karyogamy. So it is a dikaryotic stage which contains new two nuclei. Then this diploid zygote, because of the karyogamy, there will be formation of a diploid zygote. And that zygote undergoes meiosis, resulting in the formation of what are called as haploid spores. Plasmogamy. Then fusion of two nuclei, we call it as karyogamy. Then resulting in the formation of zygote, that zygote undergoes meiosis, resulting in the formation of haploid spores. life cycle of a, a fungi we will be seeing first plasmogamy so where there will be fusion of cytoplasm so resulting in the formation of a dikaryotic stage then followed by karyogamy that is fusion of nuclei resulting in the formation of a diploid zygote and this diploid zygote undergoes meiosis resulting in the formation of haploid spores and this haploid spores germinate to form what is called as mycelium so the mycelium fuses again that is plasmogamy will be followed by karyogamy, resulting in the formation of diploid zygote. So if you see, there will be both diploid as well as haploid stages. So we call such a type of life cycle as alternation of generation, where the diploid phase will be alternating with the haploid phase. Oops. It is called as alternation of generations. So let us take a small concept test. Hyphae, which are continuous tubes filled with multinucleated cytoplasm, are called aseptate, xenocytic, septate, both A and B. Children, we have studied such a hyphae, hyphae without a septa is called as aseptate. And we know this aseptate condition results in the cytoplasm which contains several nuclei. We call such a condition as xenocytic. So both the options A and B are correct. So the option D is correct. Now, See the next question. Fungi growing on cow dung is called parasitic, coprophilus, saprophytic or lichen. So children, fungi which is growing on cow dung, we call it as coprophilus. Okay. So now when you see a relationship like this, where the different types of the organisms are coming from a single ancestor and because of the difference in their characteristics again during due to the evolution they are placed in the separate groups or separate kingdom but they are again related to one another in some other characteristics so uh, if you see all the organisms will be originating from a common ancestor such a type of the relationship we call it as phylogenetic relationship and this type of the classification we call it as phylogenetic classification and this is mainly used to study the evolutionary relationships okay so by this, I will be ending the class today. So with this, we have completed the entire lesson uh, that is biological classification with this lecture. If you have not seen my lectures, I will be providing the link so you can go through those lectures. Hope you like this video. If you like, please give a like, share and subscribe my channel, Spanna Biology. Thank you. Stay tuned.